Hi, I'm Matt Zandler, and I'm talking to Richard Carrington. Um, and you're, uh, you run, you're the executive director of Voices Against Violence? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, tell me about Voices Against Violence. Voices Against Violence is a program that uh, was put into place to help work with the young people on the streets of the community. Uh -huh. um, and we turned it into an organization that was working with uh, nearby communities to stop a lot of the violence that was going on in the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, we now work in the local high schools with uh, local youth. We have over 150 youth in our school-based program. Uh, we have approximately 60 youth in our evening restoration project, which works with youth offenders uh, around trying to get them back on the straight and narrow. Uh -huh. And then we have a uh, free summer camp that runs in the summertime from the week after the children get out of school to the week before they go back to school. So right. we run all summer long. We've had, uh, we had over 217 kids last year in our summer camp. Right, and you say that it's the, it's the best. Yes, it's, I heard. Yeah. Our, our, our summer camp, uh, we run five days. We have field trips every Friday. Yeah. We go swimming every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. We have providers come in throughout the week. We yeah. have a fitness program. We have a literacy program, science program, math program, and we work with all our young people and a reading program. Yeah. Um, we've been very fortunate to get some volunteers that give a lot of their time and effort um, who really care from their heart on making a difference in the inner city communities. And that is what makes it, I mean, I, I feel like that's what makes a difference is like getting kids, keeping them like, not like keeping them involved, I guess, and, and out of trouble is what helps people like. And in and and a lot of ways, you're absolutely right, keeping them involved and also keeping their families involved. Yeah. Um, because as we well know, uh, children emulate the ways of their parents. Yeah. And when they're put in a position where the parent isn't showing them full care, then they're left to their own devices or the streets themselves to make determinations for them. Yeah. So we try to work with the, the holistic approach of working with the family. Yeah. So from top to bottom and bottom to top. Yeah. It's all available for the, the low, low price of, of zero. zero. Four easy payments of zero. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, zero, it's, zero. Yeah, it, and it has no interest either. So. Yeah. <laughs> Except in the kids you go there. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot because we also... Uh, work with our juniors and seniors. We do college tours. Uh -huh. We take yearly trips to uh, various places that they've agreed that they want to go visit. Uh -huh. uh, last year, we took 50 kids down to Washington, D.C. to the um, Black um, African American uh, History Museum. Uh -huh. And we toured D.C. while we were down there. We spent three days down there. Oh, Had wow. a nice you guys time. Dri drive down there? Yes, we actually take a bus. We wow. take a bus down. The kids enjoy themselves. We get hotels. We stay overnight. Yeah. Um, the, the kids in our program are a family. Yeah. And one of the things about this particular community is we have a lot of families. We have grandmas, we have moms, we have grandkids, and we have great grandkids. So they're, they're, the ancestry, the, the tree, is, is prevalent right here within this community. Yeah, that's what I felt when I, when I like, uh, here, like, I feel like when people drive by, they see each other and they, like, they know each other and there's like a sense of family. Well, that's Pittsburgh in and of itself. Pittsburgh yeah. is just basically a big country town. Yeah. That's what we are. Every, you go to most cities around the country and major cities, Philadelphia, New York, Detroit, Chicago, Miami, uh, you don't know anybody that lives on the east side or the west or north side. In this particular city, uh, you know everyone. You know, you go to whether you're driving down the north side, east or west, or here in South Pittsburgh, that you find yourself in a position to um, know a lot of the families and the people involved. Yeah. Well, and and so and Voices Against Violence that's based in Belsuver. It's based right here in Belsuver. Uh -huh. It was created here in Belsuver. I'm a uh, 48 year resident of Belsuver. Oh wow. Um, and at that particular time, the majority of the people that you'll probably interview here um, have been around that length of time or have grown up in, in the community. Uh -huh. And um, so with that, we have multitudes of kids. We initially started out working with Bell Suver, then we uh, expanded to what we call the Hilltop. Right. The South Pittsburgh communities known as the Hilltop, there are 10 of them. And then working in the Pittsburgh public schools, it was um, the request of a lot of the parents to say, "Why are you working with just kids in need and trouble, or are you working with all kids?" Right. So then we reached a point where, for Voices Against Violence, a good thirty percent of the individuals involved in our program were uh, white people, yeah. who were from these communities. So we've crossed over barrier lines, parents are or color lines, I should say, 
and uh, parents uh, appreciate us for our service right. and what we offer to their kids in the community, we often make a major difference. And I venture to say that there's nobody as good as we are at what we do. That's great. I mean, it's great. To, it's great not only to be the best, but also to feel like you know you're the best because like to have pride in what you're what you're doing. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, and so, do the kids also like? Um, like, are there are there leadership roles for the kids within your organization? Or? There, the the kids, and one of the things about our group that makes us unique, and this is even for our summer program. And I'll I'll skip to the summer program and come back to what you were alluding to. But uh, for our summer program, we don't have a set schedule on what our activities and what we're going to do throughout the summer. For the very simple reason, the kids know what they like yeah. and it makes no sense for us to dictate a, a daily schedule or regimen to them without having solicited their advice and information on what would you like to see in this camp. Right. Um, it would make no sense for me to bring in a karate instructor and most of the kids aren't interested in that right. and then to find out maybe they're interested in some other aspect of, uh, of their basic needs and so we try to gear our summer camp towards what their needs are. Throughout the year-long program or the school-based program, which is basically a 10-month program, the length of the school from the day school starts to the day school ends, um, we have leadership roles for our kids. We do community service projects. We're involved in the, the uh, feeding the homeless. There are multitudes of things because nowadays kids are required to prove community service to be eligible to get into college and various other aspects of higher learning. Oh, yeah. And we require all of our kids to graduate, which up to this point in our 17 years, we have a 99.7% graduation rate that's, that's of all our great. kids from high school. And we have a, uh, at last check, we had a 98.3 uh, success rate of our kids going into secondary education. Oh, wow. And that comes from them, them being put in leadership positions. So we may take our seniors from our school-based program and put them in charge of particular areas within our summer-based program yeah. to give them the opportunity that if they're going to make mistakes, do it in a friendly environment. Yeah. Um, if you're going to get chastised, do it. have it be done by people who love you. Yeah. And then at that point, when you get out into the real world, you begin to realize that we were probably harder on you than they're going to be, so you're prepared and ready for it. Yeah. So there are, there are many leadership positions for our kids to be involved in. Yeah, plus, I mean, like, the real the real learning a lot of times comes from when they try to teach or, like, when you're teaching and you're giving, you're really, like, gaining the most. One of our biggest compliments is to have our kids say they want to go off to school to study social work so that they can come back and work with us. Yeah. You know, we have kids throughout not only the state, at uh, the majority of all the state colleges. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, kids that are at Morehouse down in Atlanta. We have kids that are in Ohio. We have kids that are in New Jersey, Philadelphia. Um, we've got kids graduating and going to college all over the uh, eastern seaboard right yeah. now. Do a lot of kids come back to Beltsuver? Um, to be honest, the majority of the kids, once they reach a point where they have graduated college and have expanded their mind as well as their social network, they begin to look for jobs in those populated areas right. because they know what they're coming back to Pittsburgh for. Yeah. And at that particular point, this isn't a very welcoming place for young people, and that's one of the things that the community is working on. Oh. You know, and I mean the city as a whole, working on a way to uh, bring young people and keep young people within this city. Hmm. All right, and so, so yeah, so you're trying to get, you're trying to work on this community to get them to even want to and have it be a good place for them to come back. Most definitely. Um, you know, there. If, if you look at the city and you begin to map it as you already have, you know that there are communities within the city that are overpopulated and overserved. They have millions of dollars flowing in. They have new buildings going up. They have department stores. The businesses are getting support. Everything is happening. And then you look at other parts of this city, which primarily in South Pittsburgh and West Pittsburgh, there's very little going on. If you remove Carson Street from South Pittsburgh, there's nothing really happening right. in the south of Pittsburgh. That, that, yeah. If you look at the West End, it's almost the forgotten neighborhoods of the city itself. If you looked at, at the north, the east, and central um, Pittsburgh, they're booming. Right. They've got everything. They've got grocery stores coming in. They've got businesses building multi-million dollar YMCAs. Yeah. 
you know, and at, at, at some point you either have to be, the city itself is diverse. Well, if, this, if we know the city's diverse, then why isn't the sharing of the funding as diverse as the city itself? Right. So, they, you know, that's some of the issues that we're eventually going to face the new mayor. Hmm. So um, we primarily, here in South Pittsburgh, we focus on our kids. We so focus on stopping the violence in our streets. We focus on giving them some alternatives to learning on the street. And we also put them in a position where they're never able to say, no one told me. If I had someone to who would have told me these things, I would have been in a better position. Mm. And so we make sure that at minimum, we do give them the wisdom, knowledge, and love that we have. Yeah. All right, great. That's, that's inspirational. Uh, thanks a lot for talking to me. Yes, and sir. Taking the time. And um, uh, do you have a website for Voices Against Violence? Uh, yes, it is. We have uh, www.vav.org. Uh, All right, great. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, this is Richard Carrington. And uh, yeah, go to the website. Check it out. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thanks.